it is Friday the 13th today. We felt a little bit premature for Halloween stuff, but Friday the 13th kind of has that Michael Myers vibe to it, right? And it is, at times, we'll bring up Michael Myers, we'll play the music, we'll be thinking, all right, what would make you hear this music in your head? And I thought it was a perfect time with us talking hockey and the fact that rookie camps have arrived and the real stuff begins next week, and it is Friday the 13th. Why don't we kind of do a little role play here, a little role play Michael Myers mashup, all right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys ready for this? Does that, <laughs> that make sense? I think we've done this. This can't be our first Friday the 13th, right? No, we've had a number of Friday the 13th. Yeah. So it just felt <laughs> more appropriate today. Friday the 13th. <laughs> we, we should do this every Friday the 13th, though. Of course. We should probably do a Michael Myers type mashup every time we run across a Friday the 13th, and that happens to be today. Um, yeah. All right, oh, you're playing the role of the Ottawa Senators. We'll get to the Leafs at the end. We'll all factor in on the Leafs answer. But, oh, you're playing the role of the Sens. What would scare you the most? about either the roster or the setup going into this new season. Their goaltending apparently is shored up. I still have question marks about the decor, about what they're going to do. I know they brought in Jensen. Uh, I, I, that would be my one question mark. Is that enough? Can Sanderson be the game breaker, the younger kind of Duncan Keith stud that's got the puck all night? Getting it out of trouble, getting it into offensive, you know, advantageous situations. And can the rest of the, like, can Shabbat be a guy that's just not out there for so many goals against and, and just doing weird things out there? Like, be counted on as, like, an $8 million guy. Mm -hmm. That's a big, that's a high-priced guy. Like, that would be my only question mark. If I was sitting in an office looking at a whiteboard with all the names on it that... Like the forward group, don't get me wrong, there's a bunch of those guys that need to contribute to defensive hockey, much like the stuff we just talked about with the Leafs. But I wonder what that decor is going to look like in their own zone. Because, Noodles, you were bench side. Yeah. You saw some stuff that was pretty gruesome last year well, on top of what the goaltending was doing. I'll go a step further for you, Oh, if you don't mind, just two words. Go ahead. Atlantic Division. Like, that That would scare me. Like That's scary. That Like, they could have a great season. But you, you know, who's coming out? Like that's, like that's the. Yeah, the, I guess you could just literally look at the whiteboard and look at the division you're in. Oh, you know, okay. Like they, they have to have the season of their lives, and somebody else has to have a step back mm -hmm. on either side, Atlantic or the Metro. Like you, you know, somebody has to. Have, basically, they've got to hunt somebody and take them out somehow. That's what scares me. Is because can they do that? Are they there yet? Are there? There's so many question marks. But I'm just coming back. Oh, you laid it out beautifully. There's lots of questions, but I just I would say Atlantic Division. That's just two words for it, right there. Yep, I think that's very reasonable. All right, Noodles, moving on uh, to the West Coast. You're going to play the role of the Vancouver Canucks. What uh, scares you about heading into a new season? Thatcher Demko's knee. You know, knees, knees, lower body. However you want to. That that team. If you're looking at it, you know that Jake DeBrus signing kind of under the radar. You know, like you. You, they've got a really good team there, and and deep, and their D are big and mean, and they've got a lot of good things going on there. And Thatcher Demko is a, an absolute rock star of a goaltender, but I say but, if he can't be healthy and can't get to a level that they need him, you know there will be some easier nights. We'll call it for them just based on where they're playing and and all of that. Some of the teams that are in the in a retool rebuild, but. If they're looking to do damage, what which the expectation is there now for the Vancouver Canucks? Mm -hmm. Two words: Thatcher Demko. That's the that's my guy. Yeah, that seems to be the buzz, obviously, out in Vancouver. Just tracking what what is being said and talked about online. It's like what is going to happen with Demko? You know, and Shilavs was was great in the playoffs. You know, it was great in a situation where he got thrown in there, and you've got him as your backup here, and he's probably going to have to start the season as the number one guy. But if you want to get to the promised land, you need Demko. He was so good last year. Yeah. And once you get to the playoffs, you're going to need your number one guy. You just can't be expected to go on a long run without him. Canucks right, also got to prove, Hazy, just quick on the Canucks, they also have mm -hmm. to prove that what they did last year is who they are. You know how teams can, like, turn a corner and they have one fabulous season and then all of a sudden they return to kind of the old kind of weird version of themselves? 
Yep. That would give me a tiny bit of Michael Myers where it's good. They get a little bit complacent and it's like they have to show that that's that's what they are for good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You got to exact complacency would be scary. Complacency. Hey, we've done it now. We figured it out. It's all good. Um, all right. I'm playing the role of the Edmonton Oilers here on Friday the 13th. What would scare me about this upcoming season? And it's birth certificates. It's the age of my team. I got a, I got an old team. Like it's and you talk about complacency. I don't think they will be complacent because of the roller coaster season last year, the way it started. I think that stunned them naturally. It should. I don't think they're going to start the same way they did last year. I think they're incredibly motivated, obviously. And I think they're a really good team. But you look at this. Connor Brown's 30. Henrique's 34. Hyman's 32. Jan Mark's 31. Nugent Hopkins, 31. Like, again, these guys aren't way over the hill. Derek Ryan. Um, and then on the back end, you know, Arvidsson's 31. You've got Kane's 33. Corey Perry's 39. Jeff Skinner's 32. There's a lot of guys over 30. Like, a lot of guys playing forward that are over 30 before you even get to the back end where, you know, a number of guys are, are 30 and 30 plus. So that's the question. And we talk about trends, and a lot of times we goof on it with Al's brother and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure we've seen a team with this many guys, like north of 30, 31, that go on to win a Stanley Cup. Like, it's it's generally a young man's game, and it, it can be tough to try to go back to the well with these guys. So that, that would be concerning, because everything else I feel pretty good about where I'm at in Edmonton. Um, yeah, I mean, right. I, I think they're... they're the scary part for me would be as if McDavid was 33 or Dryside, all of those guys. Like they're still in their prime. Their big, big boys yep. are in their prime. Yeah, you they're going to have to give some of those guys a breather in the in, in yeah. February and March, where it's like those guys you just mentioned, Hayes. They might need a night off. I'm not talking about full load management, but just it's all about one thing for those guys. So whatever they all need to be ready for, because you just named off a lot of guys in their 30s, which in today's NHL over 30 is, it's a number. That's what I'm I, saying. Like, it was even yeah, weird exactly. to hear Zach Hyman, 32. 32 years old. I know. <laughs> exactly. Ekholm's 34. Like, these are all really good players. Like, Ekholm and Hyman had unbelievable years oh, last yeah. year. Nugent Hopkins yeah. into, into his 30s. But it, it is a number that does kind of stick out. Like these, there's, these are not guys in, in their mid twenties, right. you know. And even McDavid is not long in the tooth, but he's going into his tenth season, I believe. I mean, what is he's he? Twenty seven. Crazy time. man. Yeah. What is yeah. he? Is he twenty seven now? Uh, must be. He was born in ninety seven. So yeah. yeah twenty seven. Turning turn twenty 28, eight, January thirteenth. Yeah. So he'll going play as a twenty seven year old, but I guess tenth year. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I know yeah. he's been in the league for nine years. All right. Oh, circling back to you. You're playing the role of the Calgary Flames here. Yikes. Scary. <laughs> Scary stuff. What scares you the most going into a new season in Calgary? The most is the pain that could be inflicted here on the fan base because they're not going to be good again this year. And then... The flat-out truth of it is, if you don't draft some type of stud and generally like a center, <laughs> like you're going to have a hard time getting out of it. So that's the scary thing. And I would stare at their whiteboard and say, when are we going to get a draft pick that's going to turn this organization around? Because that's probably the only thing that yeah. that's going to do it for us. Because... You talk about, like, scorched earth, that's the only way you get out of it. You've got to find, in the top five, a player that turns into an Austin Matthews, a Datsuk, a Connor McDavid, and that's your way out. And if you don't do it, you're generally kind of spinning your wheels for a long time. And the way that Canadian markets can be so fickle with other players around the league, it's like, can you afford to spin your wheels for more than... Like, they want to get that team cooking going into that new building. Yeah, so that's four or five years or whatever it is, but you've got to have, you got to hit. That's basically what it is, guys. You've got to hit on your young players. Like you know, when you draft, like this Wolf looks like he might be a player, the goaltender. You know, you've got to find some other guys, whether it is drafting and developing or in trading away some of your assets and bringing in, you know, younger guys that, that need an opportunity. But they are kind of in that you know, mid-level right now, retool. Like, they're not, Kadri's not going anywhere, I don't think. I don't think, you know, Huberto's not going to go anywhere. Guys like that, 
you do need veteran guys to help the retool along. What do you but, expect to see from Huberto this year? God, what would be a happy what would be a happy season for Huberto? Point a game, eighty two? Oh, he's not getting anywhere close to that. I, oh. I think that ship has sailed. There, it'll, like the, yeah. these these first two years, he You're was telling worse. me this guy got to Calgary and his game just left him. How else do you explain it, dude? Like last yeah. year, he was I, I know. worse than he was the year before. His numbers, like he 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 is he is at no point in Calgary looked like a player even remotely close to a point of game guy. That's fact. That's not an opinion. That's not an opinion. No, that's a straight fact. That's yeah, just looking fact. at numbers. You're just talking numbers. You're Strictly not, you know, numbers and yes. watching a play. Where like that, it's not like hey, snake bit and this guy's rocking yeah. tonight. Like he has completely lost himself, and it's scary. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it got so extreme. You know, is he capable of that? Of course he is. He had 115 points one year. Guy was a beast a couple of years ago. But I don't see that noodles. I think the bar is like, can he talk 25 goals and 60 points? I think yeah. he'd take that right now. I, oh, honestly, yeah. honestly I think, think that would be, he that. would think that was a great season. Yes. Which is yeah. crazy for 10 and a half million for another six years or whatever. Yeah. Um, all right, Noodles, yeah. you're playing the role of the Montreal Canadiens. What is scaring you the most going into a new season? <sighs> Just the development of the Like, you've got young players. Like, I, I think they're positioned for those young players to take another step. What would scare me is that if they, they don't take another sl- step, if Slavskoski takes another, like, a step back, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, what is Caulfield? I think we're waiting for Caulfield to break through. I really am. Like, I, I feel like Caulfield is a special player. You know, he changed his number in tribute for Johnny Goudreau. Um, you know, what is he as a player? Can he get to 40 goals? You know, that's so I, I think that's my biggest thing is you, you want to continue trending in the right direction. If they have a set a step back season, now it's now now you decide, OK, what is that team? Where is it? Where is the future? And I think they're positioned to take a step. I don't know what that looks like. It's not a playoff spot, but it's take some points off teams that that are playoff teams, you know, on a semi nightly basis mm-hmm. and compete. But that would, would scare me as if the young guys take a step back and you're going you go from being prospect to suspect. Right. And that's what I don't want to see. Yeah, I think that's that's hundred percent accurate. Like it it's about being stalled. Like you, you gotta take yeah. you gotta take a step. Right, like you've got yeah. to do it, and if you're just in the same spot after this upcoming season, then you've made mistakes, you know. And 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 guys that maybe you've invested in or you've believed in just simply didn't get it done. Um, all right, I'm playing the role of the Winnipeg Jets. What is scaring me coming into this season? Part of it's the division too. I, I think Dallas is really good. I think Colorado is really good. Um, but I'll, I'll say depth and depth scoring, like scoring in particular, they're about a middle of the pack offensive team last year. But they, they need, like Cole Perfetti, they got to figure out what they're doing with him. But they need guys like that further down the lineup. They need guys to stay healthy and put up numbers, Nick Ehlers and others, where it just it has not seemed like when they get into a shootout against a Colorado, if they get into something like that with Dallas or what have you, I don't know if they've got those weapons to keep up. You know, they, they've been a consistent playoff team. Like, they've, they've done a really good job. And a lot of that last year was Hellebuck was just so phenomenal um, that they got the job done. But you can't rely on Hellebuck every single year. And and especially in this day and age where it, it can be a lot of times early in the year, it's a goal-scoring clinic out there, and it can be high-scoring and high-flying, and there's open ice. Do they have enough depth, enough talent to keep up with some of those juggernauts in the West when it comes to scoring goals? Pretty simple yeah. for the Winnipeg Jets. I would have Michael Myers' music playing in my head. If I was Chevy thinking... They're going to trick everybody again to thinking that they're a serious contender because they tricked me again last year. I was like, with that goaltender, and they went on a stretch. I think it was like January, February, New Year type stuff where it was like they were 2 1, 3 1 teams to death. Yes, they didn't give up anything. They, dude, they, they were. I, I was like, how does that not ever translate into playoff success? And then they got in the playoffs. And it's like they pulled their goalie in the first period and started playing hockey without a goalie. It was like, where did that team go? Well, it was, they had, it was 20 some games, maybe 30 games where it was three or less goals. Yes, 30 plus. And noodles, I'll give you, I'll give you props on one thing because we talked about Hellebuck and how he's got to stop the puck. The amount of rubber that they were giving up in the playoffs 
Yeah, and it's ridiculous. It, it was insane. It was insane. Yeah. And I, what I what 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 scare me is, how do you go from that that tight defensive team winning two one every night and dummying the whole league to what that was? It's crazy. So that would be the the Michael Myers. I, I you're right. I'll add one more thing on it. The challenge is, is when you look at your team and go, like you you're looking at Colorado. You're looking at really good teams in your division and going, how are we going to, like, where is, how are we going to beat that team? Like, do we have the ingredients? Did we add the ingredients to get us over the top and go head to head? Four That's times. Th- four times. You're right. Keep in mind, you know who's going to be a team that, uh, that to watch that we haven't mentioned? Because I think Nashville's going to be better. That's right. Nashville in their division, too. You're right. Right. Like Nashville, Dallas, they got Nashville, the goalie. They got the, yeah, they got the, the D. And and now you add in Stamkos, you add in Marcia. So on top of, you know, the Forsbergs and Evangelista, guys like that, like they've got some skill there Roman now. Roman Yossi, man. Yossi. A- like absolutely. The D, yeah. So it would be I, – I, that's where I look for Scary. Winnipeg is not to take a step back into mediocrity but try and push through and, and compete with those big boys.